Dan wants to know if the third heaven, also called paradise a couple of lines later, is what we commonly think of as heaven. What are the first and second heavens? Yeah, it's actually it's actually all of the above. Um, you know, we have to remember when we get into this that heaven heaven doesn't have literal geography. There's no latitude and longitude. There's no literal levels or stages as though when you were in one you could measure their size or their distance from each other. Okay, so we got we have to be careful that we don't overly literalize the language when it talks about heaven or these levels of heaven and so on and so forth. I mean they're they're all this other place and they you know they're they're spoken of in in these ways to distinguish parts of them. And again, we, we, we are forced to use the language of space. We are forced to use spatial language, the language of embodiment and physicality to talk about a spiritual realm that doesn't actually have those things because it's not the world of, of, of our experience and our embodiment. But the only way we can talk about those other things is to use the language of our experience and of our embodiment. This is just always the way it is uh, in, in Scripture and in our own discussions. So with, with that in mind, the level's language is trying to communicate that the presence of God, God himself, like, like where the presence is in the spiritual world, that that spot, as it were, and realize we can't even speak of God in that way correctly, because that makes God a spatial being. But God is omnipresent. Okay, you see the problem we have of even using this language, but I'm, I'm just going to try to wade through it because that's what we have to do. So the levels language is trying to communicate that the presence of God is the holiest place in the spiritual world. God occupies in Paul's language, the third level. Some, there are some ancient texts from the Second Temple period that have three levels of heaven. Second Corinthians 12, 2 is you know, what the, the question is really deriving from. Other texts have seven levels. You say, well, why is it different? You know what? Well, they're all talking, trying to communicate the same idea, that, that the highest level, the seventh level, or the third you know, level, is, the, the place where God is at, that's the holiest spot, the holiest place. The language tries to parse out where we are in the spiritual realm, where other objects are in the spiritual realm, and then where God himself is in the spiritual realm. And so it has to use this, this level language to do that, uh, again, to, to make sure that God is given the preeminent place. He is the preeminent being on, you know, in this, this plane of reality, the spiritual world. You know, again, it's just a way of establishing, to use a, a Levitical you know, way of expressing it, gradations of holiness. You know, if you think about the temple, the tabernacle in the temple, there were, the, 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 the more inward you went, the greater the sanctity, okay? So that you had, you, you couldn't have non-priests occupy like the first level of, of sacred space. I mean, they could bring a sacrifice up to the to the to the gate or the door of the tabernacle, and it would be sacrificed. But they couldn't go beyond a certain point. Then priests could go there, but but you know there was a, there was a, a subset of those priests who could go into the holy place. And then there's there's only one priest that could actually go into the most holy place, the holy of holies, once a year. This was this was designed to to teach and to reinforce the idea that the ground gets holier, okay, the closer to God that you are. It's this, the, these gradations of holiness. We talked about this in Leviticus about, you know, what's done with the blood and, and all this kind of stuff and who can go where. It's the same idea sort of transferred into the spiritual realm when you get these levels of heaven. Um, there's a lot of speculation in Second Temple period literature. You get all these heavenly visions and journeys of individuals like Enoch and Abraham and Baruch and you know so on and so forth. There's, there's there's a number of Old Testament characters that have these journeys, and then and you get this language, you know, that as they're as they're on their trip, so to speak, to to see the presence of God, you pass through certain levels, these heavenly levels, and and it's designed again to teach the idea that the closer to God you get, the more sanctified the space is, the, the more holy it is. I I personally think the three level approach. Is probably modeled after the temple. You have the court, the holy place, and the holy of holies. You got three levels there. 
The seven levels, again, I, again, my suspicion is that it has something to do with the number seven being perceived or thought about as perfection. Uh, and, and you say, well, how do you get seven in perfection? Well, it's modeled after the creation week, that everything is created in six days, and on the seventh day, God rests in his his temple, which is, you know, in, in, in Genesis, which is, you know, Eden on earth, you know, that, that it, it, it completes the activity. Uh, there, 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 this is what, what God wanted to do. He did, and he did it, you know, exactly the way he wanted to do it. So you've got this, this perception, this, this idea, this numerical tag, as it were, number seven, that speaks of completeness and, and in that sense, a perfection. So I, I tend to think that that number is used, again, to convey the same idea. And I think that the number three, you know, as we're speaking of levels, is really drawn more from uh, sacred space on the ground, you know, boots on the ground, so to speak, that we read about in the Old Testament. 